Welcome back everyone. Today we are going to make some elemental bromine. Because elemental bromine is highly toxic, this video is only for educational and entertainment purposes. Do not recreate this experiment. For this experiment you are going to need 205.79 grams of sodium bromide, 80 grams of TCCA or trichloroisocyanuric acid, 222 2 grams or 190 milliliters of 33% hypochloric acid, 230 milliliters of distilled water, and also some sulfuric acid for drying the bromine in the end. When dealing with bromine, appropriate safety measurements such as lab coat, gloves, a gas mask and a very well ventilated area must definitely be in place. I'm also going to try something new, because while distilling a lot of bromine vapors will obviously leave the apparatus and I attach this nearly used up gas mask filter to a tube to be used as a gas scrubber. You can also use sodium thiosulfate solution or something similar. We started off by adding 205.79 grams of sodium bromide to a 1 liter round bottle, 2 neck round bottle flask containing stirfish. We then measured out 250 milliliters, which were then added to the sodium bromide. The goal here was to dissolve all of the sodium bromide in distilled water. Normal water could in theory also be used because it won't have a huge impact on the yield. The magnetic stirrer was turned on and we waited for the sodium bromide to dissolve. The stirrer bar had a pretty hard time in the flask but eventually it managed to break up all of the sodium bromide. By the way, what you see on the left of this round bottle flask is a gas in the tube. We will use this to bubble chlorine gas into the sodium bromide. On the left of the table, we set up a chlorine generator. To a 1 liter round bottle flask, the TCCA was slowly added. Make sure to wear a dust mask and also some safety goggles while doing this because a lot of TCCA dust will be produced. The 1 liter round bottom flask was fitted with a pressure equalization addition funnel. After making sure that the addition funnel was closed, 100 milliliters of 33% hydrochloric acid were added. 190 milliliters have to be used in total, but I only have the small pressure equalization addition funnel and therefore this will have to do the job. We are simply going to refill it once all of the hydrochloric acid in there has been used up. A gas outlet tube was attached to the top. At some point all of the sodium bromide had dissolved and we were ready to go. The entire apparatus which consisted of a chlorine generator and a two neck round bottom flask in which the bromine will be generated connected to a distillation bridge to distill the bromine was set up. A lot of you have probably seen the NIRAD method of sodium bromide, TCCA and hydrochloric acid in a single flask before. This might be easier but I decided to go this route because the NIRAD method sadly always gave poor yields to me and you are going to see why this method right here worked very well. And there you have it, our apparatus. On the left, TCCA flask, hydrochloric acid. Both of these will generate chlorine gas, which will then be bubbled in the sodium bromide solution, where bromine will be generated. The bromine will then be distilled over into this flask and any bromine vapors leaving the apparatus will hopefully be caught in this used up gas filter trap. To start the reaction, the valve of the addition funnel was opened. Hydrochloric acid was allowed to drip onto the TCCA. Immediately a yellow gas becomes visible. This is chlorine. 
The first reaction taking place is TCCA reacting with hydrochloric acid to form cyanuric acid and chlorine gas. In the beginning, air is purged out of the apparatus and no chlorine gas enters the solution of sodium bromide. But when the chlorine enters the sodium bromide solution, you can immediately see a color change. The solution becomes yellow and later on reddish. This is because another reaction takes place here. The sodium bromide reacts with the chlorine gas to form elemental bromine and sodium chloride. The elemental bromine leads to the color change. The complete reaction can be seen above. Trichloroisocyanuric acid, hydrochloric acid and sodium bromide react to form bromine, cyanuric acid and sodium chloride. For some odd reason, even though the solution didn't get hot, the bromine started distilling over before we even turned on the heating mantle. But after all of the chlorine had been added, the heating mantle was turned on and we started the distillation. After a while the bromine started boiling and this really toxic but beautiful vapor front started to appear. Bromine has a boiling point of around 59 degrees Celsius. For this reason it is hard to condense using tap water and ice water has to be used instead. This is real time footage of bromine condensing. The entire distillation turned out to take shorter than expected. I expected it to take around 1 hour, but it only took 30 minutes. When the thick brown bromine vapors disappeared, the heating mantle was turned off. I first tidied up everything while leaving the bromine flask standing on the side. In the distillation flask there should only be remaining some sodium chloride, little leftover sodium bromide and some bromine dissolved in water. To turn the leftover toxic bromine into something harmless, sodium thiosulfate solution was added. This converts the bromine into bromide. This is what the collected bromine looked like. You cannot see it, but on top of it there's a thin water layer. To get rid of the water layer, the bromine was transferred to a separatory funnel. Here you can see again why this experiment should not be recreated and you see a lot, I mean really a lot, of toxic bromine vapors flowing out of the funnel. Bromine is not to be messed with. The bottom bromine layer was transferred to an Erlmeyer flask, leaving most of the water behind. The bromine water was neutralized using sodium thiosulfate solution. While doing this, the bromine is converted into bromide and you can also see some sulfur precipitating. The bromine was then transferred to a freshly cleaned and dried separatory funnel. This is because the bromine still contains water and we want bromine that is nearly water free. To do this a dehydrating agent such as sulfuric acid has to be added. And there you go, approximately 30 milliliters of concentrated sulfuric acid were added to the bromine. This has to be done somewhat slowly because it is possible that the bromine might heat up if it still contains a lot of water. The separatory funnel was closed with a glass stopper. It was taken out of its stand, carefully, turned upside down, shaken and vented. As I already said, it could heat up a lot if there's still water present and therefore the venting is absolutely crucial. To determine the yields, the bromine was transferred to a measuring cylinder. The sulfuric acid layer, with the sulfuric acid being less dense than bromine, was left behind in the separatory funnel.
we collected 51 milliliters of bromine. This corresponds to around 159 grams of elemental bromine, which is approximately a 99% yield. Afterwards, there was one thing left to do, which was to transfer it to safe storage bottles. Besides storing it in ampules, bromine is actually pretty hard to store. But these 25 milliliter Duran bottles with a PTFE lid turned out to be good. I have tested them over a two week period using iodide starch solution and they turned out to be leak proof. If you take a close look at the bottom of the screen, you can see that there's a huge cloud of bromine. Bromine is way denser than air and therefore it stays low. It dissipates pretty badly, but it flows right off the table. For this reason, you should also never hold a bromine bottle above your eyes because bromine vapors tend to flow downwards. Bromine vapors can give you chemical burns, they can blind you and if you inhale them, you will get pulmonary edema. Pulmonary edema should be a painful way of death where liquid will accumulate in your lungs. For safety purposes and to make any leak visible, I always seal toxic chemicals in a vacuum bag. For even more safety, the bromine bottles were then transferred to another container. You may wonder what we even need so much bromine for and I am going to tell you. We made benzene in one of the previous videos and we are going to make bromobenzene. Because we are going to make a large amount of bromobenzene, we are going to need around 25.6 milliliters of bromine, which is half the amount of bromine we produce today. And there you have it, we made some bromine. If you like this video, make sure to drop me one of these and consider subscribing to my channel for more chemistry content in the future. I wish all of you a nice day, until next time, bye.